Music is a very powerful tool of expression. It is a medium that can help us better understand the state of our own thoughts and emotions. A lot of times, it is hard for us to make sense and comprehensively make the contents and context of our thoughts and emotions plausible enough for us to properly grasp. Because we humans prefer things that are tangible, things that can be easily picked up and perceived by our five senses in order to better comprehend and eventually interpret them. And since our thoughts and emotions are more inclined towards a set of mythical, enigmatic and ethereal presence or form within us, we humans will eventually try to find ways to decode them in order to properly decipher them and relate to them. That is why we often write, draw, act, play, build and of course sing in order to express our emotions by channeling, constructing and structuring them through tangible mediums. And music is one of those very powerful tools or mediums for us to relate our thoughts and emotions to and better understand them intuitively through the tangible expressions within a collection of properly structured tunes and words. In today's age, music has become extremely vast and dare I say it, almost necessary in our daily lives as they become a huge part of our culture. So much so that they can effectively affect and dictate our moods, determine our mindset and even goes as far as implementing a set of belief system into our values. Which is exactly where both the gifts and dangers of music lies. You see, when we are able to profoundly relate our thoughts and emotions to the music we listen to, we are inevitably tied onto an invisible string or a leash by the music while being escorted through their narratives in order to witness where the music takes us. In other words, the music becomes our guide that we put our trust to follow in order to understand the state of our own thoughts and emotions and eventually would reveal to us a state of salvation and redemption. The same thing happens when we watch movies that we can relate a lot with our own life circumstances. We want to see where the movie takes us. We invest more of our trust into them and let the narrative of the movie guide us to eventually and hopefully take us to a much better place of realization and understanding. And the same dynamic happens when you watch this video or even when you're reading a book or a novel. The more emotionally vulnerable and lost you are, the greater the likelihood and magnitude of your investment and trust will be. Now this can be a very powerful and positive tool of influence should the medium guides us into a world of objective and realistic revelations. But it can be a very dangerous and crippling tool should the medium guides us into a world of delusional, dysfunctional and ignorant fantasies or subjectivism. Which is I'm afraid exactly what is currently happening in today's world. Most of today's music constantly tell us to wallow in our emotions, to never move on from the past, trying to relive the past, to not give up on the hope of reliving the wonderful past, to focus on love, that love will prevail, that you are deserving of love, that without a special someone you are living a completely pointless and hopeless life, to humiliate those who hurt us, to be angry and complain for the unfairness of the world, to glorify drugs and promiscuity, to blame everyone and everything else but yourself for your failures, to ignore all criticisms, even the constructive ones, to feel entitled to the best the world has to offer no matter who you are, and to make the world know that they owe every single one of us appreciation. Basically, today's music tells us that the solution to our miserable life is to run away from our problems, escape reality, and live with the utmost hope that the best times will come by itself without any significant effort. Even one of the artists that make the music themselves confirms this. Obviously, I have nothing against the artists. They obviously make great music that allows us to relate our thoughts and emotions tremendously that connect us more as human beings. It is just that I wish they could make more music that have real-life constructive messages for our mental well-being rather than leading us into a state of uncertainty, grief, regrets, hopelessness and hate. Bygone are the music that reflects and enforces reality, encourage us to keep on surviving and face our problems, teach us how to constructively utilize our emotions, reveal the unrelenting truth of this world, that you can't turn back time and embed to us the grueling journey on what it takes to become successful and become someone of value. Even if they are still around today, which they do, they don't get produced enough, they don't receive as much attention and nowhere near preached enough to the world. Songs like Eye of the Tiger by The Survivor Last Breath by Future, You Know My Name by Chris Cornell, and Last One Standing by Skylar Grey, Mozzie, Polo G and Eminem. 
don't receive as much credit, attention and marketability as they rightfully deserve. Because as we've all understand before, painful realities are much harder to adopt than hopeful, pleasurable and satiating illusions. Even if they were once popular and received many praises and accolades, they are inevitably overwhelmed by the magnitude and frequency of today's dysfunctional and personally defective music. And of course, a lot of you would like to have this kind of music to exist and evolve further into the next generation so that they can positively and re realistically influence the people of the future. And so do I. But unfortunately, we are still fighting a losing battle until in my guess when the inevitability of the calamities and disorder of today's society becomes too self-evident and too apparent to ignore. We are living in the age of emotionalism, especially as men we are told endlessly to be more in touch with our emotions, to become one with our emotions, to prioritize emotions over reasons when it comes to making decisions, to follow your heart instead of your head. And eventually, what happened when we've done exactly just that? The humiliation, degradation, dishonor, condemnation and eventual emasculation of men. Couple that with social conventions and the medias including music promoting and encouraging emotionalism, we inevitably become a degenerate for our own sake and for the people that rely on us. Prioritizing emotions will not solve your problems. Let me say that again. Prioritizing emotions will not solve your problems. Relying on emotions to solve your problems is a bit like asking the fire how to put itself out. Now some of you might be thinking, why do you hate emotions so much? We humans are emotional creatures, you know. To shut down our emotions means that we are rejecting our humanity. I understand that point of view. I really do. We are emotional beings and I've said it many times before that emotion are the most powerful force within every human being. However, if we do not know how to understand, control, utilize and apply that powerful force, it will simply just be a useless and impractical hindrance or a dangerous and destructive compulsion. Which is obviously and unfortunately how most of the world's perspective is pointed at when it comes to emotions. Our mind can be proactive, but our emotions are always reactive. Instead of guiding us how to be proactive to face the brutal reality of real life circumstances or how to harness the reactive nature of our emotions in order to construct future proactive solutions, we are told to wallow and just endlessly and mindlessly live in our reactions and rely on them to produce solutions through wishful hoping. Which is exactly how mental health problems are created in the first place. Life will not get better by running away from it and just hoping it would get better in the end. You must understand your circumstances, create solutions and take actions in order to make it better. Everything will be okay eventually. Well yes, time certainly helps you heal up. But if your problems still exist, it is only a matter of time before your wounds will reopen by themselves. At which point you will realize that the time and hope you've been clinging on for so long becomes your most apparent enemy. Thank you for watching.